some confusing things happened to the first part of the recording, which was 19 minutes long, and I apologize that um, this is uh, like a very weird format to be starting a game in, but it was a very confusing um, platform, and we are going to be reading the prologue for Alfred, because originally it started me at season two, aka like the hunter version, and I'm just, I was just like, that is very, very confusing. Don't know why they would want to do that, but um, we're going to read the prologue for Alfred. And yeah, let's do that. So we're doing that right now. Prologue version, which This is a story from long ago. It took place in a mysterious castle intersecting two worlds. One world called Lorraine where humans li without power lived in, people gathered under the king's rule and lived in accordance with the law. The other world was called Reichdor, where magical beings possessing dark power lived in, not having a king to rule them, they lived faithfully to their desires. However, a clan with extremely strong power appeared among the free residents of the darkness, vampires. They began to manage and control the path to travel between the two worlds. Lit. <laughs> After thousands of years since the vampire's appearance, there are only a few humans remained who knew of the existence of the dark beings. And she, too, lived in a peaceful village in a small... In, mm, and she, too, lived, in, in a, lived a peaceful life in a small village until she realized her fate, that is. Day one. No, stop. Stay away from me, or I'll bite off my tongue. What a brave girl. Don't touch me. You better not move otherwise. Ugh. I feel a sharp pain in my arm. I can't move for for a moment as a result of the pain. Seizing the opportunity, the two men close in on me. Cut it out. Some people just don't know when to give up. Now stay still. These men. No! As I struggle to get away from them, a thorn twisting around my body stings me. Every movement I make the make leaves more scars, causing me so much pain. I can't help but try to escape. I never thought this would come to this. I curse my own curiosity from the bottom of my heart. I have lived as a witch for a few years in a small village called Nuheim, apart from my parents. A long time ago, witches were said to be a symbol of your evil spirits, but nowadays the wor word witch has come to describe the women who can formulate medicine and perform magical spells of some sorts. In other words, my daily work is to make, s make medicine and cast soothing spells on people. There are two things women in my family line have inherited for generations, a lucky charm pendant and the power to see the future. A scene from the future just pops in my mind, and then fades away. It's rather strange. Nothing sophisticated, though, as I have no control over the power. I can't see the future by my own will. The only thing I know is that what I see in an event that is bound to happen sometime in the future. I've noticed that the power has been getting stronger since a few days ago. I've been seeing more and more visions as the days go by. What came... Into my mind was a vision, was a vision. I sounded like Miranda sings right there, but <laughs> what isn't Colleen canceled or something? I don't know. I don't keep up with that. Anyways, what came into my mind was a vision of a forest near my village. Far into the forest, there was a castle, and two men I do not know. Every time their figures appeared in my mind, I always heard a strange song. Okay, I guess it was playing for like a second, but I guess it's not. When I could no longer ignore the visions, I decided to enter the forest. Hey Phoebe, you're as beautiful as usual. Where are you going? Hello, I'm going to pick some medicine herbs. What? It's too dangerous to go in inside that maze, like, forest alone. I can escort you if you like. I'm fine on my own. Thanks anyways. Having casually exchanged a few words with a villager, I entered the forest. Although he was kind and caring, I had no intention of taking him up on his offer. 
People call this forest Idora Forest, the delusive forest. The name said it all, as I soon lost my sense of direction. Encircled by tall trees, I kept walking around aimless aimlessly. Jeez, what should I do? The faint lights that had broken through the, f the trees were now completely gone. My intuition was warning me to leave, but I had no clue of which way I had come from. I was too careless. Just when I, I was at my wit's end. Ugh. The scenery around me had been has was wiped uh, out by bright whiteness. I know this feeling. This is what happens when I see the future. The two men at the castle were staring at me, standing in front of the castle. Then I started to hear a strange song. Let's see. This song. It's the same strange song. The moment I tried to listen carefully, everything went black this time. After I see the future, I always get dizzy or a headache. Already knowing this fit would end soon, I sat by the nearest tree and took a deep breath to calm myself down. I'm fine now. I opened my eyes to see the forest had thickened even more. I don't know which way I should go. As I tried to think of a way to get out of here, I looked around. Something black was moving in the corner of my eyes. What is it? The black object was wrinkling in the darkness. I walked towards it in curiosity as it grew bigger and bigger. Is this one of... Is this one big lump of something? No. Rather than that, I noticed this, that small objects were forming it into a big lump. There were num numerous red dots on it. Bats? All the red dots spotted me as I muttered. As soon as I realized those, those red dots were the eyes of bats, I started to dash in the opposite direction. They fly, honey. They fly. I ran for my life. Having made sure that the bats were no longer chasing me, I finally stopped. I was breathing hard from all the sprinting. All I, all I could do then was try to regain my breath, looking at my feet. When I was finally able to lift my eyes from my feet, my breath was taken away by the scenery spread out in front of me. There was an old castle. seemed like it would rot away at any moment. I felt a sense of deja vu. I remembered seeing it many times. Just with a black and white filter over it. Does that song come from here? Are they in the castle? I should go find out. I looked up at the castle. I held my pendant, a family treasure handed down to me, tightly in my hand to get courage. Then I slowly laid my hand on the gate. It breaks. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hello? Excuse me? The door opened like... Ugh. The door opened to show a gorgeous interior, unlike its outward appearance. Is anyone here? I called out, but nobody responded. Silence covered the entire castle, and there was no sign of inhabitants. Nobody lives here? But still, it seemed to be in good repair. The hallways and even the handrails on of the stairs were nightly, nicely polished. I might find someone in the other rooms. Having a ray of hope, I decided to go look around the castle. A human girl. I hope she won't cause any trouble. What's this tasty smell? Oh, I'm ready for it. Yeah, yeah, don't sweat over me. I'll behave. I spent the next while searching the castle, but I didn't see a single person. Am I alone in this large castle? Castle? <laughs> Am I alone in this large castle? It's kind of scary thinking about it. My slight hope to meet someone who lived here was starting to fade away. I should probably get out of here. However, as I just just as I turned around, candlelights illuminating the hallway suddenly went out. My mind froze in complete darkness. It's dark and I'm scared. Dreadful fear dominated me. Hey. Can you hear me? Someone came behind me and patted me on my shoulder. Though I was looking for someone living in the castle, this encounter only gave me fear. Hey, don't be so nervous. You look so tasty, but I won't eat you right away. Eat me? 
A sharp, cold feeling on my neck ter terrorized me. A knife? Because of the way he was, the word knife promptly came to my mind. Uh, he covered my mouth with his hand to muffle my outgoing scream. Don't make a fuss. It only caused big trouble for me. I can't breathe. My consciousness started to fade away. Just before I passed out, I heard something drop to the hard floor, the footsteps and footsteps coming towards me. Lit. Why am I tied up? When I opened my eyes, my body was wrapped around in, the, in a thorn, so I couldn't move freely. Where am I? Yeah, where are we, sis? I looked around the room, which was relatively small. This is just like a jail. A cold blade was put to my neck. I remember that man shut my mouth with his hands, which made breathing impossible. And what happened after that? It was only natural I didn't know what happened as I lost my consciousness. I wish one one vision one of visions no I wish one of the visions would happen now. Alas, only if I knew what's go going to happen next. However, I I had never been able to control the power the way I wanted, no matter how much I wished for it. First of all, I've got something to, I've got to do something with this thorn. Just when I move my body to escape from the thorn. It's better not to move your body. They only prick your skin deeper. Huh? I was shocked to find a man with a gentle smile entering the room. Rupert, wait. I can't believe this. Another surprise was in store for me. As a blonde man showed up in the room right after the first man, I moved my head slowly back and forth looking at them. Oh my. I've seen that many times in my visions. Is this your castle? Do you guys sing that strange song? I couldn't hold back my curiosity and question them, but the blonde man just glared at me in response. I don't remember giving a mere human permission to speak. I was dumbfounded by his violent verbal attack. Alfred, even though she is a human, you must treat her with respect. I thought I told you that. I'm Rupert. This is Alfred. Please forgive my little brother's misbehavior. This man who called himself Rupert pushed the blonde guy aside and showed me a big smile. <laughs> you, were you were only born a bit earlier than me. Don't make yourself look big. The man called Alfred pushed Rupert away and looked at, before looking at me. Hmm, I think this is it. Right? I can see a resemblance. I had no idea what they were talking about. Only if I could make her part of my bloodline. Your bloodline? Shut up, human. All you have to do is offer up your blood. With a sharp, cold glare, he gave me a cruel statement, and again, I was at a loss for words. <sighs> Alfred... Rupert showed me a wry smile, as if he was dumbfounded by his brother's behavior. I'm deeply sorry for his rudeness. He usually behaves better than this. He looks at least better than the blonde guy spouting rude words at me. But he my daddy. <laughs> my blood? Bloodline? Resemblances? They sure are strange. Why am I tied up anyways? So many questions came to mind, not only to mention the thorn pricking my skin... Different types of feelings mixed with each other. Among them all, anger grew stronger and stronger, and I began to speak. Did you guys throw me in this jail? I didn't carry you here, but I ordered someone to do so. Ordered? I thought he was a gentleman by the way he speaks, but I guess I can't trust him after all. It's true that I'm the one to blame for trespassing in the castle, but to tie me up with thorn branch is crazy. I want to get out of this eerie castle. I want to be free from them. First things first, I must get rid of this thorn branch to get out of the jail. It's so frustrating, but it looks like I have no other choice besides begging these two in front of me. I'm Phoebe. I apologize for trespassing in the castle. So please get me out of this thorn branch. I'm sure it gives you guys pain to see a woman. Pain to hurt a woman, doesn't it? I understand. I'm not, I'm not into watching a, a lady tied up in front of me. However, Rupert hadn't shown a complete... Hadn't completed his line. Instead, he showed me an evil grin. Humans are cunning creatures. I'm sorry, but we can't let you free. Let me tell you, the only way you can become free is to give me your blood. To give me your blood. I suddenly felt a chill run down my spine as I listened to them speak at the same time. Wow. <laughs> Their terrifying request brings me back to... 
the present situation I'm in as I was recalling what had happened to me now until now. You're covered in blood. He grabs me by the by the hand as I'm thrashing my arm around desperately. Get your hands off me. I'm getting bored of this. After muttering, Alfred brings my wrist towards his mouth. Stop! My whole body trembles as he licks the blood from my wrist. Sweet blood, huh? His lips are stained with my blood as he grins. Please let go. I'm frightened to death by, by not knowing their intentions. Stay away from me. The more I struggle, the more the thorns bite into my body. My clothes, skin, and my face. I was covered all over with painful cuts. I told you not to move. Rupert talks to me in a gentle manner, but I realize that he isn't on my side. Oh dear, a lady shouldn't get scars on her pretty face. Looking sad, he bites through one of the one of his fingertips. Rupert? Wondering what his next action would be, I shout out in terror what he does next. Rupert applies blood from his fingertip to the cut on my wrist. In an instant, my scar miraculously disappears. Look, your face. Rupert's blood applied to the scars on my face as well. Though I can't see it myself, I feel the scars healing in an instant. With my knowledge as a witch, I know that be what beings can heal any scars with their blood in an instant. Alfred won on my blood, and Rupert cured my scars with his blood. I now know for sure what they are. Vampires. My statement is soon to be confirmed. Didn't I tell you? Alfred and I are, Alfred and I are both vampires. He must be honored to be desired by, by us. Alfred reaches, then reaches his hands to expose my shoulders. Don't! The thorn branch around my body tightens as I struggle to break free. Behave yourself. My body trembles as he whispers in my ear, and I soon find myself paralyzed. That's better. Alfred strokes my hair as I feel his breath on my neck. Damn. Sharp pain runs through the left side of my neck and my right shoulder at the same time. Ugh. The sensation penetrating my skin. I know that's their fangs without even looking at them. My blood gathers at the place where the fangs make con contact. Ah. Hearing, this, hearing a sweet gasp from my right side, I turn into the direction to see Rupert, whose crimson eyes are staring at me. He takes my finger and licks the scar on my finger. I have never tasted such sweet blood. This is quite addictive. Whispering into my ear, he sucks up my finger. Stop! Damn. Wow. Kinky. <laughs> no, not enough. Another sharp pain runs through the left side of my neck. I need more. Damn. Rupert's fangs thrust into the bite mark he already made and sucks more blood from there. Please stop now. I'm supposed to be... F f I'm supposed to be feeling only pain. But there's something different from pain in this. What's this feeling? My consciousness fades away while my blood is, suck is sucked away. I slowly lose the ability to think. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Eventually, everything goes black before my eyes. Damn, we passed out. We said, "Night, night." Wake, wake up. Hmm. Huh? I feel something rough rubbing against my cheek. I slowly open my eyes. An unusual ceiling. An unfamiliar ceiling. An unfamiliar room. An unfamiliar cat. Whose voice was that? Sitting up on the bed, I look around. I thought I heard someone talking to me. However, nobody's in the room except me. Good, you can move your body. I just made sure that no one's in this room. What's going on? When I look in the direction of the voice, I see a cat sitting. Wait a second. That's right. I hear the exact same voice from the spot where the cat is sitting. Who are you? I am a cat living in this castle. People call me Spade. I've never met a cat that can speak before. I wouldn't have believed that a cat could speak if I was in a vampire's castle. I've gone through so much that I'm no longer surprised by the cat speaking. We can talk about m my b my language a bit later. The problem here is you. Me? Do you remember that you had your, your blood sucked by the vampire brothers? Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. It's just uncomfy right now. I'm just like, eh. But doing this for you guys. Yeah? How can I forget about that? 
the pain of the fang sticking, sticking into my skin, the indescribable weird sensation, pleasure. They tried to make you a part of their bloodline by sucking your blood. Now I know what I've become. I've turned into a vampire. Facing reality, I get all depressed all of a sudden. Don't look so down. You haven't become a part of their bloodline yet. Huh? You are still human. I'm not a vampire yet? I take speed up in my arms because I'm overwhelmed by happiness. Don't s start celebrating yet. Hear me out. I put him down on the floor as he struggles in my arms. <laughs> He's like, hell no. It seems like you're a descendant of a special bloodline. You are now between a human and a vampire. Does that mean I'll eventually turn into a vampire? Yes, you are exactly right. Spade confirms my question with a nod and stares at me with a serious manner. You have ten days left. Find the Rose Garden somewhere in this castle within those ten days. Roses blooming in this castle have mystical power. Drinking the evening dew will purify you of the vampire's curse. Find the Rose Garden in ten days? Why are you so nice to me? Because you're not supposed to become a vampire. I don't know how helpful I can be, but I wish to support you. Thank you, Spade. I have no idea why Spade knows those kinds of things, but it relieves me to find out that there's someone in this castle willing to help me. I'll find the garden and leave this castle as a human. But the moment I harden my resolve, a, a knocking sound resonates from the door. And we about to be like, oh, oh, <laughs> um, I ain't attracted to you like that. <laughs> Whoever's knocking, period, let's do this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be the prologue and prologue only. So yes, I have written, I've written, I've read the prologue. Now you'll have to wait for chapter one, which I will be recording right after this. Probably, because it's way too hot right now and I'm trying to get comfortable and everything. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this prologue. And if you did, feel free to do all the good stuff. And if you didn't, feel free to leave some criticism. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next one of whatever I make. <laughs> Peace out. Bye.